Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again. And in this machine shop tips number 198, I'm going to cut a spur gear, 14 and a half degree involute, with uh, 29 teeth, 12 diametral pitch, and I'll be using plain indexing using this uh, Cincinnati dividing head. And remember in the last video, I cut a 30 tooth gear by direct indexing. Now go back and watch that video if you haven't seen it because uh, there are certain things mentioned there that I will not cover in this video. And also if you have not seen video number 192 which is an introduction to gears and gear cutting, be sure and look at that because uh, that's where I talk about all the different nomenclature and uh, formulas and I'm just going to have to assume that you know some of that stuff. So. Uh, be sure and look at those videos. Remember in the last video it was a 30 tooth, this time a 29 tooth. And uh, there are three ways of indexing or dividing. And I uh, have already covered direct indexing and in this one it's going to be plain indexing. But if you remember about direct indexing, these are the numbers uh, that we can uh, divide and uh, there is no 29 on there so direct indexing is not possible to use so we have to use plain indexing and let's look at the formula for that first of all I have to determine the diameter in which I must cut the gear blank and again it's a, a aluminum cast aluminum gear blank 5 8 wide and it's held onto this one inch arbor this time by a set screw. Now I know that set screw hole interferes with the teeth but I do not care for this particular project and it is held on a one inch soft mandrel and I'm going to hold one end in the chuck and the other in the tailstock uh, center. Now this is the formula for determining the diameter of, of a blank and remember there's 29 teeth so the diameter equals number of teeth plus 2 over the pitch, which is 12. And doing the math here, the diameter equals 29 plus 2 over 12. Simplify it here, 31 over 12, and divide that out. And the diameter is to be 2.583. This is the 30 tooth from the last uh, video tips. Remember the diameter on it is 2.666 so this is 29 teeth and you can see it's just a little bit smaller and that's been turned down and chamfered and are ready to mount in the machine and uh, ready to cut the teeth on. Now to cut a 29 tooth gear 12 diametral pitch we must use cutter number 4. Now that's the same cutter we use for the 30 tooth and that cutter will allow us to cut anywhere between 26 to 34 teeth and here it is again in the Brown and Sharp book the number 4 cutter and that's already mounted in the machine that's why I can't uh, directly show you the size and the uh, depth is also marked on that and the depth of the tooth is going to be 180 thousandths same as the other one and the cutter thickness is 252 remember I miked that before and that's uh, going to be necessary here in a few minutes to know the cutter thickness and be sure and measure that because not all the cutters have the same thickness and I'm talking about the thickness right here and once the cutter is mounted on the arbor you cannot read any of this information because the collars cover that up. And that's why I'm making a, a big deal out of that to record that ahead of time. Otherwise you've got to dismount it. As mentioned, the tooth depth is 180 thousandths and that was marked on the cutter. But another way of finding that, if you uh, have already covered up the, uh, the marks on the cutter or the cutter is not marked, use this formula. The whole depth of the tooth equals 2.157 over the pitch. The 2.157 is a constant. Carrying that out, the whole depth equals 2.157 over 12, the pitch, and divide it out, 
it equals 0.17975 well we round that off and it equals 0 0.180 do you recall from the last video that I talked about setting the cutter on center that is raising and lowering the table until it's exactly on center and this again is the Bagesse and Bagash method just by eyeballing it not recommended but maybe close enough for some cases but I'm going to repeat the other method here as soon as I mount the uh, blank here between centers okay let's go through this again this is just a uh, a tool bit blank and you can use any little parallel you want but it needs to be straight and it doesn't really matter the uh, the thickness but I'm going to clamp it onto the top of the cutter make sure it's clean now if you have three hands you can hold it on there but it works so much better if you got a little spring clamp like this Let me move that out of the way now using a, a feeler gauge of whatever thickness you want this is two thousandths Coming in from the back, there's a gap now between the arbor, which you can see, and that tool bit. And what I'm doing here is, is uh, raising and lowering uh, the table, whatever's necessary, until the top of the cutter is at the same level as the top of the arbor. So now I'm cranking the knee up until we feel, or I feel, a little bit of a drag on the feeler. There it is, so I'm right on the edge, or two thousandths away. Now what I have to do is remove this, and the diameter of the arbor is one inch, so half of that, or the radius, is five hundred thousandths, and the thickness of the cutter, which was 0.252, half of that thickness is 126, and I need to subtract the 126 from the 500, and uh, the uh, result there is 0.374 so I must raise the table by 374 I've set the collar on the knee crank to zero and now I'm going to raise it but I said 374 actually I'm going to raise it 376 because I need to add that two thousandths thickness of the feeler gauge and count out loud when you do this to yourself of course one two three and seventy six and I come right up to the seventy six and there I am and now I'm on center and all we have to do now is determine of the depth of cut the tooth depth is a hundred and eighty thousand so everybody has a favorite method of touching off and what I usually do is just take some common masking tape tape that in the uh, position here where I'm going to touch off now you can come in uh, under power or just by rotating the spindle by hand until you tear the masking tape and that's what I'm going to do off camera then I will zero out the digital readout back away from the work and feed it in 100 and eighty thousandths and then I will lock the y-axis and that's all ready set to cut the tooth or the gear okay you see how I've come in touched off cut the tape in half literally back this off I've set the digital readout to zero and I will feed in with the y-axis now to 180 thousandths there's the tooth depth and I'm locking the y-axis the table in the y-axis I didn't mention how I mounted the cutter into the arbor but uh, go back and look at the other video for that but I do have it mounted such that when the uh, bridge port is run in forward I will be cutting because you never want to run one of these backwards it's a form cutter and you'll quickly dull it and I like to feed toward 
the uh, dividing head or the chuck. Notice that again the work is held uh, one end in the chuck, the other in uh, a tailstock center. And of course if you have a center up here you can uh, do that too, hold it with a dog. Either way is uh, works quite well. And uh, be sure and lock your quill here before you set that depth so that's already uh, done and I I locked the knee as far as the height is concerned so the only table movement I have is in the uh, X or longitudinal direction and uh, I lock the tail stock and we are ready to go make sure you have sufficient space in here so that as you feed and I like to feed this way again uh, that the cutter will not get anywhere near the chuck jaws or the whatever method you have of holding it so that so that there's plenty of room there. Remember we're going to do plain indexing so we're going to calculate the index using the formula we used uh, in an earlier video when I explained this. Remember this is a 40 to 1 ratio on this Cincinnati dividing head so the formula is 40 over n, n is the number of teeth that we're going to cut, so that's 40 over 29. Now if we divide that out, it comes to 1 and 11 29ths of a turn that we need to make with the dividing head, with the crank here on the dividing head. Well, there is no whole circle that is a 29. So what I've done here is I've multiplied both the numerator and the denominator by 2. Now that does not change the value in any way. That just makes it an unreduced fraction. So I guess you could say I took a reduced fraction and unreduced it. So is there a 58 hole circle in this dividing plate? Well, lo and behold, there is right there. So that's the whole circle that we're going to use and we will crank the crank for each tooth one full turn and 22 spaces on that 58 hole circle. So let's set this Cincinnati up for plain indexing. Remember it's still set for uh, direct indexing from the last time so what we want to do is make darn sure that the index pin is backed away from this little index plate here because when I bought this that pin was broken off which means that it was engaged and somebody cranked the crank. Well right now remember this will free wheel. So I need to re-engage the worm and I showed you how to disengage it the other day so I'm just reaching around the back now with my free hand and I have clicked it in. I felt the worm go in so that is locked and now I have control over the rotation of the work or the spindle with the crank. Remember it's a 40 to 1 ratio. 40 turns of this will turn the work or the spindle one time. On this Cincinnati divine ahead do make sure that uh, this is snugged up and this uh, little uh, jaw here is into the serrations so this will not spin. And the first thing I will do then is to loosen this nut and I'm able to move this in and out and I want to line it up with the correct hole circle which is I just explained the 58. Make sure that it's in there just right and go ahead and tighten this up just snug it so it can't move. It's a mighty good idea to take a black sharpie and circle the holes that you're going to be using and I circled the starting point right here that's where I will begin. Now what I've done also is taken the sharpie and on that circle I have counted exactly 22 spaces. Not 22 holes but 22 spaces which we got right here and I counted them three times so that I was darn sure that I was correct because if you're just one hole off you will uh, uh, ruin your work. Now on the sector here, sometimes we used to call that the spider, you can loosen up this screw. This is so nicely made here, it's made out of brass. You see you can adjust that. 
I've already counted 22 and I've circled it down here so I'm going to set that so it spans 22 spaces I think I'll put this back in the beginning hole and I brought that up against the pin and then down here you can see where I've circled the other hole and there's little black marks between each space snug that up so the game plan here is to cut a tooth and then crank this one full turn and the 22 spaces to the next hole don't go past the hole then immediately advance the sector so it's ready for the next one and possibly go ahead and circle that with a marquee, uh, sharpie as well now you need if you've never done this before you need to do a rehearsal possibly the full 29 teeth and see if you end up back at the zero point I know that seems like a lot of work but it's less work than uh, remaking the gear blank finally after all that setup work ready to cut the first tooth and this is about a two and a quarter inch diameter cutter and I'm cutting aluminum so I'm at 660 rpm which is a pretty good speed for that and I'm going to use a little kerosene as a lubricant and I've brought this around to the zero point that's where I'm going to start and it's a good idea but not totally necessary to lock the uh, dividing head for each tooth remember the lock is on the far side I showed you that one other time just in case you've got backlash here this one seems to be pretty tight now I'm ready to cut the first tooth because everything else has been set You may want to turn the machine off uh, between uh, teeth. Now I'm reaching around the back, unlocking it, and I'm going to go one full turn and then spanning the uh, sector here into the other hole. Advance this, ready to cut another tooth. If you have a power feed, go ahead and use it, but I'm feeding by hand. Keep your fingers away from that cutter. Use a brush. Uh, make sure your safety glasses are on. Now, I'm not going to show every tooth because it'll take too long, so I'm going to cut a series of teeth here, and then I'll get back to, sh to showing you again how I'm progressing, and then I'll show you the final tooth. And I'm ready to advance this now. Again, one turn and 22 spaces for the next tooth. I'm about two-thirds of the way around and it's cutting just nicely. About ten more teeth to go. And now comes the moment of truth and I always feel an air of tension as I do this. Uh, will it come out right? But here we go on what I hope is the last and correct tooth. And there it is. It looks good at this point. I got my fingers crossed I know it's right and I'm going to show you one other thing here that will proof it before I take it out of the machine looking at the dividing plate now I marked it with the sharpie each time uh, I cut a tooth can you see like a pattern of repeatability around here all the way around now I'm going to advance it one more 
tooth and that actually will put me back into the tooth where I started and it should come out at the top. 12 o'clock high. That was the name of a movie. One and it's spanned and it's correct. I'm at 12 o'clock high and I'll take it out of the machine we'll go over to the bench. Here it is and it's looking good. You of course never would put a set screw hole in the middle of a, of a tooth like that but this is just a demonstration piece so I'll take it off the arbor now and we'll have a look. Here's the finished product. 29 teeth, 12 dimetrial pitch. That was the diameter up there of course. The teeth look very good. Did you notice that there uh, seems to be a, a little bit of a, a wobble or the, the gear cutter runs untrue? You can hear that it's only cutting on one side. I don't know why and I know it's not the spindle of the milling machine and that is a brand new arbor. But that means that some teeth are cutting uh, more than others is what it means. And that's how you do dividing by the plane indexing method. Now that I have two gears of the same pitch, let's talk real briefly about center distance. And center distance is the, the distance from the center of one gear to the next. And there is a formula for that. And as a matter of fact, there is more than one formula. This is the one we will use. But in the gearbook, you're going to find that there are two formulas for most uh, of the dimensions depending on what your givens are but using this formula for center distance number of teeth in one gear plus the number of teeth in the next gear over two times the dimetrial pitch doing the math here 29 plus 30 over 2 times 12 that's 59 twenty fourths divide it out and the center distance should be two point four five eight and that will give you the correct clearance. In the Atlas book they give you the Bagesse and Bagash method and most of the books tell you this that we don't want the gear teeth all the way together because there'll be excessive wear and excessive noise binding and so on and if they're too far apart uh, it would uh, weaken the teeth and possibly break a tooth off so uh, their method is just to put a piece of paper in there and rotate the gears and just jam against the thick paper and then remove the paper and I guess that's probably good enough for most uses but you certainly don't want that inside of an expensive transmission we want that center distance to be exact. So on this scrap aluminum I took it over to the milling machine and using the DRO I drilled two holes that distance apart and I had to make some little uh, adapters here and so on to, to fit the gears so th those are just quarter inch pins with uh, one inch uh, bushings on them and putting one gear in and then the other gear and by the way can anybody tell me what the gear ratio is here and I'll tell you in just a second but now the gears spin freely and the clearance again is the uh, the amount of space here between the teeth and that could also be measured by the correct size pin just to, to, to uh, confirm things but they turn freely and yes the gear ratio is 29 to 30 and that concludes this video on gear cutting by the plain indexing method. Be sure and watch the other videos and there will be several more following. So long for now, this is Tubal Kane.